Hi guys, this is Mrs. Gassler, and in this video we're going to talk about types of bonds, and we're going to base it on their properties. You're going to need some Cornell paper, so let's go ahead and get started. So here we are. Make sure you put your name, date, and class period right here, and our topic is types of bonds based on their properties, and we have one essential question. What are the properties of the different bonds? Now at this point you probably have already done a lab where you looked at some different compounds uh, and classified them based on their properties and hopefully you found that there were kind of three groups and so that's what we're going to look at here in the notes is those three groups. So I like charts, I'm going to make a chart. So my chart here has three spots because there's, uh, there's kind of two types and then one of the types splits into two. So I've got three there and one's not quite as high. So the first kind of bond we have is called ionic. And those are special ones. We'll talk about those later. And then we've got covalent bonds. And the covalent bonds can then be split up into polar covalent and nonpolar covalent. And so we're going to talk about the properties of all of those. And we're going to kind of compare them as we go across. So in our next video, we'll talk more about um, what makes the bonds ionic and covalent and why they're named that way. But here we're just focusing in on the properties. And so the first property that you measured in the lab was, or that you will measure if you haven't done it yet, is the melting point. And ionic compounds have a high melting point. And you knew that they had a high melting point because they didn't melt despite the fact that you had them on the heat for a good long time. And the covalent compounds, both of those had a low melting point. I forgot the word point. So they both have a low melting point because they're both covalent compounds. Now the next thing that you were able to test was the, um, the, conduct, well, the, the dissolving in water. And we found that ionic compounds did dissolve in water. And then this is where we started to see a difference because the polar and the nonpolar covalent compounds did not behave the same way. The polar compounds do dissolve in water and the nonpolar compounds don't dissolve in water. So that was one of the other properties that we looked at. Um, the last one that we looked at was whether or not they conduct electricity. And the ionic compounds did conduct electricity, and neither of the covalent compounds did. So those are the properties that we were able to observe in the lab. The only one left that we kind of didn't really pay attention to was the state that they're in. And the way it works is that ionic compounds are crystalline that means that they come in a, um, they make a crystal pattern, like uh, like the rocks that you've seen, um, or um, salt. Has, salt is an ionic compound. It has it has it has crystals in it, and a covalent compound doesn't have a crystalline structure. Um, and in fact, they can be in any state and not just solids. So um, you do not find. Um, ionic compounds as a liquid or a gas, but you do find covalent compounds as a liquid or a gas, so that is um, something that's a little bit more common. Okay, so um, that kind of sums up our properties of covalent and ionic compounds. If you have any questions, make sure you ask your teacher. Thanks for watching.